Today I'm going to be reviewing an anime series which is one of the most highly regarded of all time. So as you can imagine, I had very very high expectations coming in and what I am glad to report on is that not only did those expectations get met by this series very comfortably, but actually they were very much surpassed. Of course, today I'm going to be reviewing the one and only Death Note. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So a lot of people by now will probably know the sort of general premise of Death Note but I'm going to go over it very quickly just in case you don't. So you basically have this god of death, this Shinigami called Ryuk and he's basically pretty bored in the Shinigami realm and he decides to drop his Death Note into the human world. And this Death Note basically grants the holder the ability to kill someone pretty much instantly as long as they write their name in the book and they can picture their face in their head. And this Death Note is picked up by a genius young high school student called Light Yagami, who in turn decides to be the new face of justice, new face of a new world. He realises that this book can be used for a lot of good, and he starts killing criminals at a very, very fast rate. Now, of course, this causes complications, and the world changes very, very quickly. And in response, the government, the United Nations, enlist the help of a mysterious but also equally genius detective called L. And essentially what this series is, is, is an intense battle of wits, an intense cat and mouse chase between this high school student who is very, very clever and has got the power of life and death on his side, and this mysterious, quirky, strangely, in a way, sort of charismatic but weird character called L, who is just a complete genius. I've used that word several times now, but trust me, it doesn't even do justice to him. And these, these two sort of polarising yet oddly similar characters facing off against one another in an attempt to sort of change the world. One wants to change the world through justice and the death note, one wants to change the world by solving the case which is known as the Kira case and bringing this murderer down. So as you can tell from probably all of that, it's a very sort of complex, deep and quite sort of tonally dark piece. But I think this really has a bit of everything, to be honest. You have the sort of detective element with L. You have sort of elements of morality, whether it's right to kill criminals en masse just because you have the sort of power to do so. Is that the right thing? The anime is very, very fast paced, but it also explains some quite sort of complex issues, not just necessarily ethical issues, but also issues pertaining to the Death Note and the sort of fantasy element of it. And it explains it really quite well, but also at a fast pace. Really, this anime is just constantly go, go, go. It really doesn't get stale at any point because there's always something new happening. There's always a new dynamic, always a new relationship or some sort of thing going on. So that's very cool. One of the things, though, I really particularly liked about this anime, and you, you know, you see lots of programs, not just in the anime world, which are serious or whatever, and they can be dark and they can be raw and gritty and all that, but they don't always have that sort of light relief. And... That is not the case for Death Note. What I really like about it is not only is it a very complex detective story, but also the interactions between various different characters, people who you would never really expect to meet in the real world, but are somehow thrust together through the events of Death Note, are interacting with each other in humorous and quirky ways. The characters are very, very memorable. I'm going to talk about Ellen in a second because he is a particularly sort of well known character. And, you know, there are moments which will make you laugh, there are moments which will make you sad, there are moments which will make you feel sort of hyped up and intense and on the edge of your, your seat. So really, I think that this has a bit of everything. It's not perfect, and I'm going to discuss how it's not perfect a bit later, but you know what, I think in terms of the sort of grand scheme of things, it's pretty much as close to perfect as you're going to find. I mean, it really is up there with the elite of anime, in my opinion. And I suppose that moves on, you know, sort of, fairly well to the next thing which is some of the most interesting characters you'll ever see in anime uh, the character l the detective is you know arguably the most iconic anime character of all time you know if you look at most sort of top 10 lists of the top top anime characters l will likely be up there so will light yagami in fact just because they're, they're so fascinating and it is you know two people that in many ways are very very different sort of fighting out against each other but also sort of equally genius and and, and complex. There are certain moments, there are certain uh, scenes that will sort of stay with me for a long time because 
I was just sort of amazed by them when they occurred. So, you know, this, this anime definitely has the potential to sort of blow your mind away with some of the stuff that occurs. Now, is this anime perfect? Well, nothing is perfect, that is for sure. And in the sort of spoiler section, I will go into more detail as to, you know, what is not perfect about this anime. But what you will hear if you hear most reviews uh, is that there is an inciting event. There is a very, very crucial event. If you've seen the anime, you will know what it is. There's a very, very important event. It happens about two thirds of the way through the anime. And some people feel like maybe it isn't quite as good after that point. I have plenty to say about that, but what I will say is it is still, I believe, certainly still very much worth watching the last third. Sure, the first two thirds are absolutely incredibly amazing. Maybe the last third isn't quite as good, but still, I thought it was a fantastic, you know, piece of art, really, and uh, I, I certainly enjoyed it indeed. If you haven't watched the anime, just go and watch it and then come back to this section because there will be spoilers that I will talk about in a few seconds and it will completely ruin the show if you haven't seen it before. So, uh, yeah, I'll be... Back in a few seconds with some spoilers. Alright, so welcome back and I'm going to start off by talking actually about the plot first of all and I'm going to talk about something I really liked which was that the plot never, it, it never was stale to me. It was constantly moving and you were constantly sort of on the edge of your seat because you didn't know what was quite going to happen and I think the main way they did that was they were constantly sort of dropping at fairly regular rates, dropping bombshells at just at the point where you start to get comfortable, bang, a bombshell comes in and it just veers off in a direction that you never thought it was going to. You know, for example, you're just about getting comfortable with the fact that Light has got the death note, bang, L comes in, My arguably my favourite scene in the whole anime, the Lindell Taylor scene, and then L is genius is shown, and that's sort of a big thing. Now it's L versus Light. You start to get comfortable with that situation, then bang, Misa's brought in. There's a second notebook, and she's crazy. She's off the wall. She's you know running a mock, and then that's a completely new thing. Then you start to get comfortable with that situation. Bang, everyone's forgotten that they've got the Death Note, and some guy called Higuchi at the Yotsuba Group has now got the Death Note. These events made it so that you really were never too comfortable in a situation because you knew that at any second, okay, I understand a dynamic between two characters, but that dynamic could change in a matter of a, a single episode because a huge inciting event, whether it's Misa coming in, whether it's them forgetting the notebook, whether it's L dying, yes, that's the big spoiler, you never know what's going to happen next. And that was something I really loved. The plot, for me, never got stale, even in that last third, which I'm going to talk about that last third in a second. In fact, let's talk about it now. So the big event, which I was sort of alluding to earlier, of course, happens in episode 25, and that is when L dies. For, for a lot of people, I'm going to do a, a video, I think, talking about this in more detail, but for a lot of people, this is sort of a milestone where the series just wasn't quite as good afterwards. Here's what I'll say, basically, in summary, about what I think about L's death. Yes, the plot was at its best, that the anime was at its peak when L was in the show. L for me and for most people was the best character in the show. He is not only the best character in this anime, but arguably in all anime of all time. I think that, you know, obviously him leaving the anime, him dying, meant that it was really impossible for the anime to surpass that because there was never going to be a character, no matter who was introduced after L, there was never going to be anyone that could quite eclipse L. So is the last third worth watching? Is the last third any good? Yes, I do think the last third is very good. I think it's brilliant, in fact. I think rather than looking at the last third as being pretty trash, instead of looking at it as an indictment against the last third that it isn't quite as good, as when it was with L, maybe just look at it in the sense that the first two thirds were so, so amazing that even though the last third was really, really good, it couldn't quite surpass the level of the first two thirds. You know, if I was to give a rating out of 100 for when L was in the program, I'd probably give it a solid 90 to 95. I'd probably give the last third a solid 80 to 85. The 80 to 85 is still really, really good. But of course, it isn't quite as good as, you know, when L was in the program or the anime. And you know what, I can live with that, because there was still plenty to be enjoyed in the last third. But yeah, okay, I did miss L. Yeah, I did miss L. But I think in a way it was kind of important that he died. Uh, thematically, I think it was important for the plot that he died, because, you know, and it, and it was also a really sort of brilliant scene. I mean, this the, arguably the most memorable scene of the anime was when L died, because it was such a, such a shock. If he hadn't have died, if he had survived for the whole 37 episodes, maybe the anime wouldn't be as memorable. Maybe the character of L wouldn't be quite as memorable as well. I think there's something very endearing about the fact in a way that he died because it showed that he was kind of human and he was the same as all of us. 
The great thing about L was that he's such a genius, he's so quirky, he's so weird, but likable at the same time, but he isn't hugely relatable until he dies. And when, you, when he dies, you realise he is, at the end of the day, a human being like anyone else. He did have emotions, he did have normal feelings like you and me do. And I actually think it was very, very important that he died in episode 25. And although it probably hurt everyone, including me, that he died, I feel like actually it was probably the most crucial scene in the whole anime. So I have no criticisms that he died in episode 25. And I have, you know, not a huge amount of criticism with the last third. I just think that it just couldn't quite live up to the first two thirds because it was so, so brilliant when L was in the program that it doesn't matter really what the writers ever did. It would never quite live up to that standard. So let's talk about the last third for a second. So, you know, for when L dies, you have these two new characters that are introduced. You have Nier and Mello. Now, a lot of people, and this is, you know, really quite a large amount of people, really dislike Nier. I think Nier is quite possibly the, the most disliked character in the whole show. I actually didn't dislike Nier. I understand that to many he is sort of a cheap carbon copy version of L, and I'm going to make a video on that because I think actually Nier was quite a good character, even though he was sort of similar but not quite as good as L. The dynamic between Nier and Mello and the fact that they were rivals but then eventually had to team up to take on Light is quite a cool message as well. I think Nier was an interesting character because he was in many ways very similar to L, but in other ways actually he was very, very distant. You know, the irony of his name being Nier, he was actually quite cold and distant. He met Light Yagami right at the end of the show, whereas L had a huge amount of interactions with Light. Nier basically tried to avoid talking to Light as much as he could. He wasn't really interested in social communication at all until the very end. And I think possibly that is why he actually finally sort of completed the case, whereas L couldn't quite do that. Obviously, I know he had a huge amount of help from L, you know, L's previous work, and he also had help from Mello and so on and so forth. But I didn't think Nier was anywhere near as bad of a character as people thought. I thought it was actually quite a good contrast in the way to L, which is maybe a bit of an unpopular opinion. And uh, yeah, I will make a video very soon in sort of more detail about why I think the last third is actually quite good. Now there was, there were a couple of things in the last third I didn't particularly like. The first thing, and maybe there is a sort of um, a good reason as to why this didn't happen, but it was something I didn't understand it. And I understood most things in the series, but there was there was one thing at the very end I didn't understand. And it, you know, if someone can tell me what why this is the case, then that'd be awesome. Uh, but th th there was a scene where just before Chief Yagami dies, he gets the Shinigami eyes, and he realizes that Melo's name is Mihail Kiel, and he seems to. He seems to say it out loud on the mic so that Light Yagami can hear that he knows his real name. And Light is screaming, you know, kill him, put his name in the death note. Now, and he doesn't, and Mello survives. But what I don't really understand is why couldn't, you know, why didn't Light just in instruct Mikami, who was the ex-Kira, who had the real notebook, why didn't he instruct him just to put Mihail Kiel in the, in the notebook? I, once he knew Mello's name, surely he could have just put his name in the notebook and that would have been the end of Mello. Didn't really understand that, but there's probably a good reason that sort of went over my head. The second thing, and this isn't a matter of not understanding, this is just something I thought was a little bit weak, was, and I can understand why people don't like Nier for this, and that is how Nier found out that Mikami was ex-Kira. Basically, what Nier does, if you, you know, remember, you cast your mind back, he watches the TV for a while, he Stares at the, he stares at the screen, he sees thousands if not millions of Kira supporters. He thinks, hmm, Mikami, yeah, he, he said quite a lot, he seems like quite a good supporter, he must be ex-Kira. Yep, Mikami is ex-Kira. Now that is, t to me, if that was L, he would have actually found a much more clever and decisive way of determining that Mikami was ex-Kira, rather than just looking at a TV and thinking, yeah, he looks about right, because really ex-Kira could have been anyone. I just didn't really, I thought that was pretty weak and I can kind of understand why people would potentially criticise that because there wasn't really any clever sort of proof or reasoning or it's sort of, you know, perception behind that. It was just a matter of looking at a screen and saying, yep, he looks like an ex-Kira, I think it's Mikami. And I thought that was a little bit weak. The rest of Nier's deduction I thought was pretty good, but that was a sort of weak point that I was a little bit disappointed by. I thought that Mikami could have been found out a little bit better. I thought the last episode was really, really good. Episode 37. It, it, it was it was very, very tense in the warehouse at the end. Mikami had a very, very gory death. But I, I, I liked particularly the last scene where Light has sort of escaped from the warehouse. He's walking down and he, you know, sees a reflection of his former self before he picked up the death note. And he, you know, thinks just for a second he wonders, I wonder what would have happened with my life 
if I hadn't picked up the Death Note that day. And, you know, with Ryuk having to finally kill Light, when they were kind of friends for a long time, you know, that, that was kind of kind of a, a shame you know it's kind of sad although it was good that justice did finally prevail but i thought the episode 37 was really good i thought it was a very good conclusion and a worthy conclusion to such a brilliant series so certainly did enjoy that indeed there were several things in the final third that i did miss um for example i thought that you know just a, a really a prime example would be misa romani now misa romani was in the, the last third but basically her character was very much reduced to just being a sort of whiny brattish sort of teenager character model whatever you know before that when she had when she was actually known to be the second Kira she knew that she was the second Kira she was quite an interesting character last third she didn't really have a whole lot to say and her character wasn't as interesting and of course she was no longer interacting with Elle which was one of the big things I enjoyed about Misa's character at the same goes for Ryuk as well Ryuk was arguably my favorite character possibly in the first two thirds because he was very funny he was a bit of light relief despite looking hideously ugly, which I thought was a nice sort of bit of irony right there. And he barely features in the last 10 episodes, which I think is a little bit of a shame, but, you know, I kind of understand maybe they wanted to add new characters and they wanted to put focus on Mello and Nier and whatever, that's fair enough. But I'm just saying, I did miss Ryuk a little bit. But overall, still very much enjoyed all 37 episodes. I thought it was brilliant. And I suppose this sort of leads on to the conclusion. Death Note, you know, I'm very, very glad I watched this. I had extremely high expectations coming in. And those expectations were surpassed, if I'm being honest. So that's certainly good. I think it is pure genius. It's not perfect. I did think up until episode 25, it was going to be the perfect anime. I thought I'd found the perfect anime. It's not quite perfect. There are a couple of things I didn't like, and particularly in the last 10 episodes. But all in all, I think it's brilliant. And I think, I just hope people aren't too critical of the final 10 episodes, just because the first 25 are so good. That would be a little bit harsh, I think, because I think there's a lot uh, to enjoy about Nier and Mellow in particular. So that's basically what I've got to say today. I'll be back with more reviews of various other anime. And also I'm going to do a couple of sort of, you know, anime analysis videos on Death Note because I think it's a particularly interesting one that I want to go over. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.